Last week we talked about the, the garment of salvation and we mentioned about Adam and Eve and the fig leaf and how we are wrapped in uh, salvation. We want to continue that today. Uh, we're talking about, we talked about three tenths of salvation, obviously. We talked about the, uh, as we are wrapped in the garment of salvation, it saves us from the penalty, the power, and the present, and eventually the presence of sin. And how Adam clothed himself in the fig leaf, Adam and Eve, but God uh, realized that that wasn't sufficient, so God reclothed them, so to speak. And so as the theme continues, we're going to talk about the garment of righteousness. The garment of righteousness. And the garment of salvation. All these sort of interchangeably, they are sort of woven together, just like a garment. Uh, if you tear a part of the garment, they don't say your part of your garment is torn. They say your garment is torn. So they see there's one garment. And you don't take your, if you're going to get it uh, repaired or sewn up, you don't take the part that's torn and cut it off and, and get it sewn and come back. You take the whole garment. So everything is interchangeable when it comes to the, these garments. We talked about the garment of salvation, which is wrapped in uh, God, Jesus Christ, as Adam and Eve were wrapped in the skin of the animal, and we believe, typically speaking, that that was uh, the lamb that was slain, and that lamb was a representative of Jesus Christ, so we are really clothed in Christ. Clothed in Christ. So that was salvation. Now righteousness sort of somewhat favors that too. The government of righteousness. The next week, the government of victory or strength. And then lastly, the government of praise. Okay, uh, the four aspects of righteousness. Remember my definition now. It's a divine attribute in which a sinner is clothed at the moment of salvation. Amen. And a dress code for Christians. So, four aspects of righteousness. First of all, God's garment of righteousness is totally righteous. Totally righteous. That's his garment of righteousness. God is totally righteous. Amen. Totally righteous. There is no fault in God. <clears throat> Even his name declares that. The book of Jeremiah talks about how Jeremiah realized that the doom of, of Israel was coming uh, because of their sin. The northern king had already uh, succumbed to the Assyrians and the southern king was going to uh, succumb to the Babylonians or the Cal Chaldeans. And Jeremiah was out there preaching and teaching and weeping and apparently, you know, to no avail and the people were still going down the tubes because they were not righteous, and Jeremiah began to just ask God well, uh, for guidance. And, and, and God said to Jeremiah, in those days Judah will be saved. Not that day, but those days when Christ comes again. And live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called. The Lord of the righteous. Jehovah Tiskanu. So God's name is righteous. That's his name. We say Jehovah uh, Nissi, which is he is the banner, Jehovah Jireh, uh, he is a provider, but also he is a righteous person just by his name itself. And a name indicates who you are when it comes to scripture. He is the Lord God. He is Jehovah Tiskanu. That is, he is our righteous. So God is righteous. He's totally righteous. That means there's no blemish in God at all. Amen. No blemish at all. <laughs> okay, secondly then, if, if God is totally righteous, then man's garment of salvation, if God's garment is totally righteous, then man's garment of salvation, uh, righteousness, if he is totally unrighteous, man by himself, 
with his sinful condition, as David said, I was born in iniquity, shaped in sin. He is totally unrighteous Amen. in his in his state. Mm -hmm. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans 3, 9, and 10, and 23. We have already met the charge that the Jews and the Gentiles alike are all under sin. As it's written, there is no one righteous. This is God's assessment of you and me. Not even one. For what? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. I don't care what you do, you are totally unrighteous. You are wrapped in fig leaves. Now, God is totally righteous, and we are totally unrighteous. That's, that's where we start from. Yes, yes, yes. Because that sin that Adam committed yeah. it has been passed on to us, and we are born in sin. Yes. So we are totally unrighteous. No doubt about that. Thirdly, then, we have that God is totally what? Unrighteous. And man is totally unrighteous. Then thirdly then, a repentant sinner, that's one who comes to Christ with a contrite heart, his garment or her garment of righteousness is what we call imputed righteousness. I-M-P-U-T-E-D. Imputed righteousness. And this is where we began to get <laughs> our righteousness from God. Imputed righteousness. The imputed righteousness means that instantaneously, the moment you accept Christ, that Christ closes you in that, what we talked about last week, that skin, that, 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 that skin of that uh, uh, animal or himself. Have mercy. The moment you accept Christ, Christ closes you into, into and uh, wraps you into himself. He wraps your heart. Have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. And he gives you a new nature. You, become, you have a divine nature now. Thank you. And you're wrapped in the righteousness of God at the moment of salvation. So God takes off his skin of righteousness. He's totally what? Then he wraps you into his own skin. Now you have the righteousness of God has been imputed on you. Now you are wrapped in God's righteousness. That's the imputed righteousness. This is what the Bible says to Christ. That's the imputed righteousness. So we have God is totally what? Righteous. Man is totally unrighteous. And then as a repentant sinner, we, be, we become yeah. imputed righteousness. But then there's a fourth one that, that, uh, that we have to deal with. Imputed righteousness is that I'm instantaneously wrapped in the righteousness of Christ. But now as you walk this life, a Christian's garment of righteousness, as we have been wrapped in the garment of Christ, then Christ has to what we call impart righteousness on us. I-M-P-A-R-T-E-D. Impart. Not imputed righteousness, which happened at the moment of salvation. Now he imparts his righteousness on us. And that is a gradual work of the Holy Spirit that changes the believer's character. Imputed righteousness wraps my heart. Imparted righteousness wraps my character. Thank you. Just because you have Christ's skin on you, sometimes you don't walk as if you have Christ's skin on you. And that's why God has to gradually impart his righteousness on us. Because even though he gives us a divine nature, we still always have the old nature there. Mm -hmm. And so the more that we are, God imparts his righteousness on us. Mercy. I'm a child of God now. Now he's going to teach me how to live. Mercy. He's going to wash my clothes daily. Mm -hmm. That's imparting righteousness. Mercy. And some of us, we, we don't allow God to wash us daily. He wants to impart his right. Listen to what the Bible says. Paul